Let's go ahead and cover all of the different physics bodies. All right, so starting off, we're going to uh, have a little summary and description here up on screen. I'm going to give you uh, my own description and summary, help you guys kind of understand uh, each body as we go through it. Hopefully, I'm updating it correctly on the screen here. And then I'll provide you some, I'll say, real-world examples uh, in games, such as uh, with Skyrim for some of these. All right, so starting off, we're taking a look at the static body. This is available in both 2D and 3D, as are all of these, except for a soft body, which we'll cover later. But a static body is a type of physics body that represents a non-moving object in a game world. Um, example, you could use this for uh, platforms. That's a character can jump on or climb up. Uh, this is commonly, commonly used for things like walls uh, or environmental objects, such as uh, a barrel in Skyrim. That'd be another one. Uh, the buildings themselves, tables and counters that you can kind of walk into, but they don't move. These are all static bodies. So a static body is going to represent an object. That will never move. And one important thing to note about static bodies is that it's they are very efficient in the way it represents an object in game or in a game's world uh, because they don't need to be updated with every frame. They can lead to better performance in games with a lot of environmental objects, which is why you may see a game that, uh, say, is food on a table. You can't knock it off or knock it around. It's just kind of uh, looks like everything is glued down. Now, an animatable body, if you're using uh, 4.0, is new to this. And it is a subclass of the static body. And an animatable body is... I've never really heard of this outside of Gato, to be honest. But uh, it's a type of... Physics body, if I click down here, uh, it's a type of physics body within the engine that allows you to animate the movement and properties of an object. Uh, kind of similar to a kinematic body that we'll get to. And, but it relies on, uh, code to control its movements and interactions with other objects. But adds the ability to smoothly animate. Uh, the object's movement and properties over time, if that makes sense. Um, from what I can gather, this body is or would be useful for objects that need more complex animations than simple movement, or, than a simple movement or rotation. Um, an example of this uh, could be maybe specific characters or enemies. That seems like it might be a little specific uh, in that situation though although you could think of things like uh doors might be another possible another useful uh object for this but one thing that would be important to note about animatable bodies is that it requires more code to create and control the animations um but it can provide more complex and visually appealing behavior for the object. And let's move on to those. No, I'm sorry. We're going to go on to rigid bodies next. There we go. Um, a rigid body uh, is a type of physics body that represents an object in the game world that can move, both move and respond to physics, force, uh, physics forces such as gravity, friction, collision, and a rigid objects are commonly used, or, well, they can be used for game characters, not always, but they can be used for game characters. Um, they'll be used for vehicles, such as uh, the cars you see in uh, Grand Theft Auto V, where you can smash into them, they're moving around, and the amount of force that comes into collision, really depends on how much you're moving around, how heavy each vehicle is, all that stuff comes into play. 
those are rigid bodies. And this also goes for other objects in the game world, such as, again, if we go back to the food example, uh, in Skyrim, if you go ahead and use your Fus Roda, and you can find lots of videos of these on the internet, uh, if you were just doing that in a room that's just full of food and random objects, and you'll see those objects take that force and then just go flying all over the place, bouncing around. These are rigid body objects. They're all moving and reacting based on the forces that are being applied to it. Um, a rigid body can be further categorized into two real types, as a static type and a dynamic type. Now, that might be a little confusing when you say static rigid body, um, but it would essentially be like an object that doesn't move. Uh, while a dynamic one can move, for me, that doesn't really help uh, differentiate the two. Um, so I just like to think of a rigid body as an object that can react to physics, such as, again, the food and other clutter in Skyrim, or um, if you're playing uh, maybe a an American soccer game, uh, like FIFA, and uh, the ball would be a rigid body reacting to the player's kicks and moving accordingly. Something, what's uh, one thing to or sorry, one important thing to note with rigid bodies is that they are more complex and resource-intensive way to represent an object in the game world than static bodies. But the the upside to that is it does provide a more realistic physics simulation and interaction between different objects. So there's always those pros and cons that come with these. And last here, we have a kinematic body. Uh, if you're using uh, the 4.0 version of this engine, it has been renamed to a character body. And a character body, oh, sorry, a kinematic body is a type of physics body that is similar to a rigid body, but with some important differences. And uh, going into that, the kinematic body objects can move and respond to physics forces, but they're not affected uh, by gravity or collisions with other kinematic uh, bodies. Uh, instead, they rely on code to really control their movement and their collisions uh, with other objects. So if you want your kinematic body to get pushed by an object that's uh, moving up against it, you would have to code that in, whereas a rigid body, it would just move on its own. And it's also why when we create characters uh, using a kinematic body or the character body that we see here, uh, we have to code in our own gravity to pull our player down when they're not on the ground. Because they're not affected by things, again, like gravity and that collision. So a kinematic body is going to be in the Skyrim world that's going to represent our player, that's going to represent uh, the NPCs walking around. Um, an important thing to note about kinematic bodies is that they require more code to control its movement and interaction with objects. But it can provide more fine-tuned fine-tuned and customizable behavior for that object. And last, and certainly not least, the last physics body that we have that exists, uh, if you want to count it as a physics body, is the soft body. And that one is exclusive to 3D. Now, a soft body is a type of physics body uh, within the engine that simulates a soft and deformable object. A soft body can simulate realistic physical properties such as stretching, bending, twisting, which makes it really useful for simulating objects such as cloth and rubber. A soft body 
uses a simulation that is called Mass Spring Damper System, if I'm uh, not mistaken on that. Uh, and it uses this to create the flexible and deformable objects that it uses. The system consists of network of interconnected nodes that are all linked together by these springs, well, springs and dampers. And each node, each of these little nodes has a mass that determines how it moves and interacts with the other objects that it comes in contact with. Uh, when the node moves, or when the nodes move, rather, uh, the springs and dampers stretch and compress to simulate this object's deformation. So, an example of this could be, uh, what would be useful? Uh, if, you, if you're creating some kind of, like, visual, for some reason you want to make, like, a movie, or CGI movie or something in uh, Gato for some reason, um, you could use this for a character's clothing, if you wanted to. Um, but what I was more thinking in terms of gaming would be more like a cape that interacts around with, based on your player's movement, and you would just pin it, right, at the shoulders, and then the rest of the cape would react and flutter and move accordingly uh, as you moved around or bumped into things and so on. But uh, the important thing to note about these soft bodies is that they require a lot of computational resources in order to simulate or simulate uh, this complex physical interaction that is constantly going on. So it can be very resource intensive and could very well affect your game's performance, especially if you have a lot of these things uh, being around in your scene. Uh, another example of these would be uh, maybe a curtain sheet hanging down. Uh, that your character can walk by and it flops or flaps out of the way as the character goes through it. Uh, but additionally, a soft body can be more difficult to control and animate than other body types due to its flexible and deformable nature. So going over those uh, kind of examples again, uh, real quick. Uh, let's jump again. So a static body uh, in Skyrim, as an example, uh, would be used for environmental objects that the player can interact with, such as the walls, floors, trees, tables, counters, and so on. These objects do not move and simply provide collision. A rigid body could be used for creatures or characters, but generally I wouldn't expect that. Uh, for these, but Skyrim, a clear example of this would be all the food and clutter that could be sent flying around when you use something like Fusrota in a room. A kinematic body or character body uh, is used for player characters and NPCs that exist throughout the game and walk around, but they don't get... <laughs> Uh, affected, or they're not necessarily affected by outside forces and collisions. Alright, so to summarize uh, all that stuff up, static bodies are for non-moving objects in your game world. Wretched body are used for moving objects that need to respond to physics, to physics forces. And kinematic bodies, or character bodies, um, can be used for, they could be used for moving objects, and uh, definitely characters and rely on code to control all of their movement and collisions. Alright, hopefully that cleared up any confusion that you guys might have uh, with any of these physics bodies. Hopefully those uh, examples helped with clearing some of that up. I went with Skyrim because Skyrim has existed for in almost 12 years now on like every system since the PS3 and 360, so pretty good odds that uh, you guys sitting there watching played it, or at least seen it. But that'll do it for here. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.